Now, AI is everywhere, especially when it comes to retouching. And it just seems like every day it just gets better and better. However, that said, when it comes to retouching, it's not always the best way to go because there are things that we've had in, say, Photoshop, for example, for a long time, way down in those menus that can give us better results. And that's what I want to show you in this video. So here is a composite image that I've recently put together of my friend Gez that I photographed in the studio, and then I've combined him with this background. Now, if I dive over to Photoshop, I can show you some of the layers here that went into it, certainly before I did the black and white conversion. But it's the background that I want to show you more than anything, because this is what we have here as the background. And you can see, look, if you look at the bottom of the layer stack, it's actually made up of two layers. Now, I'll just turn off this layer mask here. I'll hold down the shift key and click on it. So now we can look at each of those individual background layers that I used to combine together. Now, the reason I combine them together is because there were parts on both of these layers that I liked. In this one here, what I really liked was these distant hills where we've got the mist. Really like that. And on this one here, I like this little ridge. And I wanted to combine it so it seemed like my friend Gares was on this area here where the hill would have dropped down. And then in the distance, you had those misty hills. So it's very, very simple to combine. Use the layer mask and then a gradient. And you can see the gradient just there. Now, if I now show you the original photographs of the background, obviously this here is like a, a one by one square crop. This is what we have here. So in the final image, clearly the background was made wider. And you can see that when I jump between them just there. So I want to show you now some of the ways that I tried to expand that kind of background, to make it wider. Because obviously, first of all, we can think of maybe using the AI technology. But if that doesn't work, what else have we got? So let's have a look. First of all, though, we'll go to use the generative fill technology. So I'm just going to unlock the layer here by clicking on the padlock. Then I'm going to get the crop tool. And I'll go to the options bar at the top of the screen here. By default, it says transparent. I'm going to use the generative expand technology. I'll then come down to the uh, image. We've got the handles going around it. I'll hold down the option key on Mac, alt key on Windows. And I'll click on the left hand marker here just to drag out a bit more canvas area on the left and right hand sides. So just go for something like that for now, let's say. And then I'll just press the little tick icon in the options bar. I won't put any text prompts in here. I'll just click on generate. And just like we're kind of used to these days now, the Adobe technology will get to work and it will look at the image to see, right, what do I need to generate to fill in the left and right hand sides here so it looks realistic? Takes roughly 10 to 12 seconds, and as always, we'll get three variations. But let's have a look at what we get. It's now finished it, and it looks pretty good from here. And I can click between each of these three variations, and I could regenerate again to get another three and keep doing that. But if I zoom in, look, this is where we start to see the problem. On the right-hand side here is the original resolution from the Sony a7R 4 that I photographed this with. The left hand side, you can clearly see what's been generated. And there is a definite difference between the two, with the generative content being very blurred. However, what we can also do to hopefully improve this, if we come to the variations here, the thumbnails that we've got, in the upper left hand corner of each of these, there's a little icon where we can enhance the details. So let's just click on that. You'll see this wheel starting to spin. We'll see a progress bar appear any second now as Photoshop now tries to enhance the details to give it a much better appearance. But let's just give it a second or two to see what it comes up with. It'll definitely be an improvement, but it won't be, as you can see, good enough. It just looks very mushy. It's definitely different to what it was, but that is definitely, for me, not the way that I'm going to go. So clearly, for this particular image, the generative expand technology, the Adobe AI, isn't giving me the best results. But there have been things in Photoshop for quite a while that we can maybe now turn to to see if we get better results from it. This time again, though, look, I'm going to unlock the layer. I'll get the crop tool. And in the options at the top of the screen here, where we've got the fill. I'm now going to choose content aware fill. So I'll come down, click, and I'll drag out the sides again to expand them. And then I'll press the tick. Now, the thing is, there's two ways of using well, three actually, because you can use it from a different menu, but there's two main ways that you can use it. One where you let Photoshop just 
do its thing with content aware fill and another where you can kind of control it as to say, look, use this, don't use this. We'll come to that one in a minute, but let's just see how this one does where Photoshop just does its own thing. I'll click on the tick icon and now we'll give it a number of seconds to see what this actually is going to produce. It's going to look at the original image, look at the original content and see what it can replicate or reproduce rather to fill those areas in. And even from this magnification, I can tell it's not going to be working. And you can look, when I zoom in, it's just not worked. That is definitely not the way to go. But let's not give up on content aware fill just yet. I'll go back to the crop tool. Uh, in fact, let's just come out of there for a second. Yeah, we'll get the crop tool. When I do, in the options by the top of the screen, I'll just set this back to the default here of transparent. I don't want it to perform any actions other than allow me to expand the sides just there. All right, so we'll take it to maybe about there. We'll be fine. Press enter or return. You can see nothing's happened. We've got these transparent areas on the left and right. So what I'll do now is I'm going to get my marquee tool and I'm going to drag out a selection of the left-hand side. Hold down the shift key and I'll click and drag out a selection on the right-hand side. So both of those areas are selected. And this time I'll go to the edit menu and choose content aware fill. Now, when we do this, we get two views. You've got the left-hand side and the right-hand side. The left-hand side, you've got this green overlay on, which is where the green overlay is basically allowing Photoshop to use all of that content there to fill in those certain areas. But you might find, you can see, look, on the left here, on the right, it's just not looking so good. So you might want to say, look, don't use, don't use this bit, let's say, because that's not looking good. And it'll then reproduce it and you'll get a different result. And you say, well, don't use this bit and what have you. And it can be very kind of trial and error, but you can see even now, just with a couple of attempts there, that is not going to be the way to go. So I'm going to cancel. We're going to come out of that one. So generative expand, content aware fills not working. What else have we got our hands on? Well, in Photoshop, we've got content aware scale, and that's been in Photoshop for quite a while. And in fact, that's what I did use for this particular composite. And let me show you how we use that. So I'll get rid of the selections. We'll keep this transparent area here. That's exactly what I want. Now what I'll do is I'll go to edit and we've got this content aware scale. I'll click on that and immediately you'll see here we've got these handles going around our image. In the options bar at the top of the screen, I'm going to leave that as it is for now. And all I'll do is hold down the option key again or uh, option key on Mac, alt key on Windows and I'll click and drag. And look, as I expect go to the left, you can see now, look, it's starting to replicate or, or sort of reproduce on the fly content. And this just works so well. It does have its limitations, but for this image, it just works really, really well. I'll click on the tick and there we go. Absolutely fantastic. Very, very happy with that. And that, like I said, is what I did in the final composite image just here. But let me just explain just a few other things about this content aware scale that you might not know because although it can work great, it does have its limitations, but there are things that we can do to push past those limitations. Now, what I mean by that is this here. I'll go to say this image first of all. Let's just say that this image here, I want to make into a much wider shot. I'm definitely not gonna use generative expand. Content aware fill, I'm not going to use. We're going to stick with content aware scale. So, first of all, look, I'll unlock the layer by clicking on the padlock. I'll get the crop tool, making sure in the options by the top of the screen it's just set to transparent. And let's just say that I want it to be this much wider. I mean, we're talking serious, serious growth here with this uh, particular image. I'll press enter, we get the transparent pixels. Now, look, I'll go to the edit menu and choose content aware scale. Now, what's great about this is, to a point, content aware scale recognizes that you have a subject of some description within your picture. And to a point, as you're expanding it, it will try to protect it from kind of being distorted. So let's have a look. I've, I've applied the content aware scale. I'll hold down the option key and I'm gonna drag out to the left. And look, as I drag that out, it's replicating and duplicating the background. But look at the fisherman they're being left pretty much well alone. In fact, they are being left well alone. Now, they are a relatively small part of this image, which is why this is obviously making it a lot easier. But you've got to admit, that is a pretty damn good result. That looks really, really good. I'm very, very happy with that. These here have been left well and truly alone. 
But what happens when you use an image where the content here, the subject, is much more obvious in the picture? What can we do then? Well, let's have a look first of all. I'll get the crop tool. Again, check here that it says transparent in the options bar. And let's just say that I want to make this picture much bigger. So we'll go to somewhere like, say, there. So we're asking quite a lot here because Photoshop has now got to reproduce the background when a lot of the background is covered by the subject. But let's give it a go anyway. We'll go to Edit, Content Aware Scale. Zoom out so we can get a good view. And I'm going to drag out on this left handle. And you can see, look, the background is being repeated, it's being duplicated and what have you, really, really effective. And to a point, at the moment, the actual surfer is being unaffected. But surely at some point, it's going to have to start distorting him. In fact, oh, there you go. Can you see his chest look? See now, look, he's starting to expand. And if I go further, you can see there, look, starting to distort as well. So it does have its limitations, but there are things that we can do now to protect it. Because you'll notice, look, in the top of the screen here, if I just go to the Edit and Content Aware Scale, there is an option here where it says Protect. And at the moment, it doesn't say anything. So here's what I'm going to do. We'll come out of that for a second. I'm going to get my uh, lasso tool. Let's just zoom in. And it's just got a normal lasso tool. I don't want the selection brush tool. Normal lasso tool. And I'm just going to draw around quite tight on the subject just here. So I'll go all the way around him like so. Things that I don't want to be uh, changed as we expand it, I need to just get as tight as I can using the lasso tool. And the reason for that is so that I allow as much of that background to be used. So we'll go for something like that. Then what I'll do is I'm going to go to the channels, and here we've got the RGB, red, green, and blue. I'm going to create another channel now of this selection. And to do that, all I'm going to do is come down here to the layer, the channel mask, and I'm going to click on that, and you can see here it says Alpha 1. Now, at the moment, if I click on that, you can see that the actual area including the surfer is black and the background is white. I need it to be the opposite way around so that we're protecting the actual surfer. So all I will do, let's just get rid of that to active selection there, and I'm just, going to press the, I'm just going to press down the Command key on Mac or Control key on Windows and press I to invert that mask. Right, now what I'll do is I'll go back to the RGB so we see the full color composite, and then I'll go back to the Layers panel, all right? Now that I've done that, I'll go to the Edit menu, and let's try Content-Aware Scale. Because now, look, in the Options bar, where it says None, I've now got the option to protect Alpha 1, which was the selection I made of the surfer. So that is now protecting him. I'll zoom out. I'll hold down the Option key or Alt key, depending on what I'm using, Mac or Windows, and let's start to drag out. So now look, drag out, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and keep going. Now at this point here is where we started to see the surfer getting a little bit distorted, but look, I can keep on going. So he's definitely, well, there we go. Look, see now look, he's starting to bend that surfboard. So to a point, it's kind of working to there, but if you find that happens, there is something else that you can do, all right? And this is just purely by experimentation, I found the best way to do it. Because to protect something when we're using content to wear scale, we want as tight as a selection around him as we can possibly get without it being actually on it, slightly off. So let's have a look how we can do that. I'll come out of here. Let's go to the channels and just get rid of that one just there. So it's all gone back to normal. And then what I'll do is I'll just come in and I'm going to go to um, select subject. So now look, it's selected him. And I might actually just come down to here. I'm using a selection brush tool and I'm just going to include certain parts. Just brush over that there. And obviously I want to protect the shadow as well. Or sorry, the reflection as well. And we'll go to there like so. And there. So now that we've got that, let's come out of it. You can see it's really tight up against him. But what I'm going to do is now go to go to Select, Modify, and Expand. And I'm just going to expand it by, say, I don't know, six pixels, and click OK. So you can now look, see, it's jumped off him. It's not right on him, but it's really nice and tight. Let's just see if that has improved the results that we get. 
We'll go to the channels. We'll save this here. Let's just create a new mask, a new alpha channel rather. Click on that. That's what we've got. And I'll invert it so that we can see what's protected. Now let's try it. We'll go to edit, content aware scale. Alpha one is being protected. I'll zoom out a little bit and then we'll drag. Keep on dragging. Keep on dragging. It's looking good so far. It's looking good. Now here is where the surfboard started to distort, but we're not getting it. Look, look how much further I can go there. So we can get so much more out of this just by protecting it with that alpha channel. So I hope you get that. <laughs> it's just something extra that I wanted to show you there, but it is. I mean, nowadays is is fascinating me what's coming in with the AI technology. There is so much that we can do. I love it. I really do love it, but I'm only using it as a way of enhancing certain things or to get it to perform certain tasks that would ordinarily take a long time. And I've got a few videos on that on this channel. But I just wanted to show you that although we've got all this new technology, there are other alternatives that we have. They're still there down in those menus. So definitely give those a try if you are somebody that's using the AI but not getting the results that you want. Hope that's useful. I'll see you in the next video. Actually, one last thing to mention. Every single bit of the retouching I did for this Warrior Composite in Photoshop, I'll be going through in one of the classes I'm presenting at the free Photoshop Creativity Virtual Summit, which is running from the 23rd through 26th of March. You can grab your free pass using this link that I've also added into the description of this video, meaning you can watch all 32 classes completely for free.